Hi, my name is Caleb White. I'm from White Oaks Woodworking. I live in Pflugerville, Texas, and you're listening to the Black Smoke Barbecue Podcast. Welcome to Black Smoke Barbecue. We are a collaborative group that focuses on different aspects of barbecue from pitmasters from all across North America. Barbecue is a culture, and we discuss topics, ideas, and the methods of it on the Black Smoke Barbecue Podcast. Our mission is to spotlight those lesser-known content creators in backyard barbecue, catering, food truck operations, as well as the African-American experience in modern-day barbecue. Sit back, relax, listen, and enjoy the show. All right, welcome back to the Black Smoke Barbecue Podcast, where barbecue is not only the code we live by, it's the culture we embody. Now today, guys, we got a great show for you. We got our uh, brother Caleb White of White Oaks Woodworking. But we're going to get to Caleb here in a minute. Let's introduce who's on the pod. Of course, I am Alton, a.k.a. The Dog Father. And uh, we got my brother T is in the house of T the BBQ. T, what's cracking, brother? Oh, man, nothing much. Trying to stay cool. Uh, This weather is warming up fast. But other than that, (laughs) everything's, everything's going all right. Hey, man, it is, you know, it is getting kind of warm over here, at least, too. It's kind of humid, you know, but we making it, man. You been out there cooking it? Uh, I did some chicken the other day. I have a turkey breast that I'm trying to get into next week. Hopefully, I got time to do it, but um, found me a turkey breast, one of those uh, after Easter sales, so I'm looking uh-huh. forward to get into that. I'm probably going to try that um that tony's creole injection that that jalapeno one i think it is mm-hmm. i don't know oh yeah the yeah, jalapeno yeah. butter yeah that one yeah, y'all did yeah. for thanksgiving uh i might try that out hey man you're gonna get hooked man but leave it alone <laughs> hey you like we'll crack? see <laughs> <laughs> so uh man you got any new cookers or, or anything going on no nah, not yet not yet okay yeah, well, it'll, it'll be soon. It'll be soon. Yeah, I don't know how you roll. Soon. It'll be soon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, also on the pod today, we got the man, the myth, the legend with his luxurious man, VKC. Brandon, what's going on, brother? Brother, all is well. All is well, man. The man is popping, you dig? <laughs> uh, life is good, man. I don't know what else to say. I hear that, man. I, I feel like, you know, I, every time I introduce you, I got to ask you, where you at, man? Are, are you are you in uh, Texas? Or are you in Dubai? Uh, are you in Tokyo? Uh, where you at, man? I, I'm home for a few days. I'm in Texas, right up the street from you. Okay. But, uh, you know, my, uh, my calendar is um, bedazzled. <laughs> yeah. I I'll hear that. that. I hear that. So what's new, man? What's going on with you? Um, I got a new uh, new resident in Grillville today. They, they dropped something off in my driveway, man. So Ooh. I uh, I'm looking forward to getting that unboxed and, and putting it to work, man. So yeah, okay, we okay. growing over here. We growing. We developing <laughs> fast, like Austin, Texas. You dig? It's, hey, every I time you that. look at something new. Man, you I guys' that. neighbors must be in hog heaven just smelling that all day. <laughs> you know My what? My neighbor used to smoke some mean brisket, and he uh, he had to stop because he had some dietary restrictions come up. So it sucks for me because he used to always bring me some every single time. I think one of my neighbors, I think their whole family is vegetarian, so I don't think they appreciate it too much. <laughs> I was but raised I, a vegetarian. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, on the other side, he loves it, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. there you go. All right, so hey. That wonderful voice you're hearing is our guest, Caleb White. Caleb didn't even let me get him his intro. He wanted to jump right on in here. That's how we roll. It's all good, man. It's all good. (laughs) Caleb, look, now look, people might not know, you know, who you are, what you do. You know, they they hiding under a rock somewhere, you know, because I can tell you this. I, um, you know, learned about you uh, through a mutual friend of ours that has moved on now. Um. At uh, Brotherton, yes, JMFB, absolutely, John Brotherton. Um, you know, uh, I was I was at an event, and they had this this chopping block out there, man, and it just it looked awesome. You know, and and Bill uh, Dumas, uh, the sausage sensei, was going to work on this on this block, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, dude, where in the hell did you get that block? You know, and they, oh man, you gotta, you gotta check out Caleb. I'm like, Caleb, I don't think I know Caleb. 
And so uh at that point I, I got to meet you and you know we chopped it up a little bit and dude the board that you made for me, the block is awesome. How did you get into this, man? And where does all that creativity come from? I have ADHD with obsessive tendencies. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, That'll do I, it. I jumped around a lot after I, I got out of the Marine Corps. I never really considered myself to be artsy at all. But uh, when I was just looking for something to do, therapeutic, my wife and I had always talked about opening up a little wood shop, kind of like an Etsy store or something. And uh, she wanted me to make a uh, little trash can hider, basically, like a little box okay. for it. And so I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to make that, I mean, we might as well start this wood shop. You know, I got this job. I'm working from home. This is pre-COVID. And, uh, you know, might as well just pull the trigger on that. She's like, okay. I'm like, you understand? I'm going to spend a couple thousand on tools, right? I say a couple thousand. <laughs> I wish it was just a couple thousand. Uh <laughs> A couple, I, couple and, uh, thousand, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> there's more than a thousand behind me, much more. Uh, so I uh, I bought some tools, and I still haven't made her the trash can hider. <laughs> <laughs> she got to get in line with everybody else, right? <laughs> yeah, it still hasn't happened. I, I, I'm, I got plans. I got plans, you know, to kind of do something like way over the top, stupid, but you know. Hey, in all fairness, you've been a little busy. I have. I have. You've been a lot busy. (laughs) A lot busy. You know, the job I originally had, um, after I got into the worst lumber market in recorded history, I used to buy lumber and plywood for a uh, crating company. Uh, I got the job in 2018. I was a full buyer on my own by 20, not fully on my own. I had a partner, but basically on my own. And uh, COVID comes around. And because I had all these relationships with these guys, I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything, but we got through because I had worked hard on building good relationships. And uh, they decided to reward me with more responsibility and put me on salary. They wouldn't say how much the salary was, and I didn't push hard <laughs> enough, so I thought there's no way in hell they'd screw me over. Apparently, I thought 25% pay cut would be acceptable. So, oh, wow. oh, what a gift! Yeah. What a gift! Left yeah. that job, and I'm like, you know, whatever. If I have to commute to another job, is a principle of the thing. But it cut down right. on my shop time because I had to commute to Georgetown, yeah, and for my new job. So that's when things got really tough. It started, you know, I'm getting more and more and more orders, and I got less and less time. And finally, uh, Pitmaster Collective out of the blue called me up and uh, offered me a job, and back to working from home. Working in a community I love, I feel like a vulture sometimes. So I can't cook for anything, but I can eat a lot of barbecue. <laughs> so <laughs> that may count for something. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, yeah. So, so, uh, so the Pitmaster Collective. Just, yeah, go ahead. No, no I was just going to say the Pitmaster Collective, you brought that up. I was going to ask you about that because I, yeah. I don't really know a whole lot about that. So what exactly is the Pitmaster Collective? Well, not surprised. Uh, it's fairly new, so uh, not a whole lot of people have heard about it yet, but we uh, have 109 restaurants, last I heard. Uh, it has to be. The criteria to be in the Pitmaster Collective as a Pitmaster is you have to do Texas barbecue, handmade sides. You know, you have to use a, a, a offset smoker, no, like, gas or anything. And uh, so they have a pretty rigid standard about who they talk to, but you'd be surprised. Heck, I'm, I'm sure you won't be surprised how... Texas style barbecue is just spreading all over the country. You got guys going like coming from Florida and all over the place. You got a guy from Japan that's coming over here to learn the ways of barbecue. And uh, so we have the pit master side of things. So they get to be part of the collective and the pit master collective hat will able to help them by putting them on their platform, not just social media, but we have a blanket on the term geo geo targeting geo marketing I, I i'm blanking on it but it basically it's much better way of advertising their business and we we that's free with the with the uh membership now okay. we have the fan side of things and that's where i come into I, I i go to spread the the gospel to the masses basically and uh, bring them on as fans the fans can join up there's two um two memberships uh one is 96 a year and then one's 144 a year, and that and the higher tier. Let me say it like this: both tiers, you get a 10% discount at each member restaurant, 
a day. You can't go like ten times in a day, but I mean that's not, <laughs> you know, with, you know how often like real barbecue fans eat barbecue. That's going to be a huge savings for them. You, you know, said that's ten percent a day. Ten percent a day. So like you, if you you can go every single day and get ten percent off. Nice. So, I mean, nice. guys go three or four times a week. You know, or me that probably goes more. <laughs> you know, they, they're saving a lot of money. And on top of that, uh, they have a subscription to the Q ma- on Q magazine. Uh, they can skip the line occasionally. They have to call and schedule ahead because you can't just show up and just walk in front of the line like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> like you're some big guy or you probably get beat up. But, you know, you, you call ahead like, hey, you know, let's say for Snows, for example, you call ahead and say, hey, you know, I'm coming in. Uh, I want to do my one of my head of line privileges and they get four a year. So when they're doing a special event, go ahead and skip the line. And then uh, there's the educational side of it. So the higher tier membership, they're going to have four webinars and four master classes every year that, you know, oh. they're going to learn from these pit masters. And we have a lot of big names of pit masters. We have Hurtado barbecue, snow's barbecue, uh, Brotherton's just to name a few. Uh, nice, so nice. It's, a, it's a really awesome program for all, everyone involved. So your your website is going to be up and running here in the next uh, what couple of weeks, three weeks, something like that. It shouldn't be more than a couple of days, I hope. Oh, okay, uh, okay. They're, they're they're making big strides, so uh, just need to make a few final tweaks, and we're we're up and running. Yeah, because I man, I'd I'd love to see who all's on that list, because I'm sure you guys got a, the who's a who of Central Texas barbecue. Oh, oh yeah, I can shoot you a list. There ain't no problem. There you with that. go, man. Hey, see, it, Brandon, we've been talking about rolling around. Get into a bunch of different yeah. barbecue spots, man. It looks Absolutely. like we got the end now. Yeah, man. That, that sounds like uh, a fantastic deal, man. Uh, especially yeah. people like us who are like actually going to go. dealerships, man. Because, like, you want you want to go travel around, see all the best barbecue places? <laughs> Here's a pack. <laughs> Get them to buy a bulk membership so they can give them out to their clients. But There you go. That's not a bad idea, brother. Brandon, no. I didn't interrupt you, man. My bad. No, man, not at all, not at all. Hey, we but, here to let you talk, brother. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> so now you you starting this, uh, you just started this position here uh, over the last couple months or whatever. Um, I mean, and, and again, we, we've talked about how you're doing all these these cutting blocks, you know, mm-hmm. for all, because I've been following you, you know, on uh, Instagram and, and seeing that you're making some fantastic blocks for a lot a lot of people, you know, restaurants and food trucks and you name it all in between. And, and here's Caleb showing up at all the different, uh, you know, the festivals and I see you out there and, 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 you know, man, you putting in that work. So with you now doing this full time gig, I mean, how's that going to, you know, how's well, that going to work out with you with the, bo- with the box? Well, I was always working a full time job and doing the wood shop. But with this full-time gig, I'm actually working from home. I'm fully remote. So besides when I'm traveling around and doing uh, uh, festivals, you know, we're going to have booths at festivals and uh, meeting with restaurants. I have like 12 restaurants right now that I go and visit, make sure they have materials, train them if they need to. Because, you know, they don't need a full a full sales gig up there. It's like, hey, here's your QR code you can scan. But, you know, just be able to help them kind of rattle it off so they're not holding up the line. It is a big deal because you know how busy these places get. And we don't want to inconvenience them. We want to help them. So, you know, uh, so I have quite a bit of time now. Um, I'm there you more, go. And I'm, I'm actually really starting to clean up my order file. I had some machine issues a while. And then Murphy was going oh, for like a few months straight. So I was, yeah. I was <laughs> really behind. But <laughs> You were going through it there for a little while, man. It was tough. It was really yeah. tough. But, you know, things are working out now. So I'm I'm really happy. Well, that's great, that's, man. That's great good stuff, man. So you know, Caleb, I started following your Instagram because Al told me about you, and uh, I saw his block at in his studio, and I was like, man, this is badass. And he was telling me about you, so I followed you on Instagram. And uh, like he was saying just a minute ago, um, seems like you've become like the go-to guy uh, in the barbecue space, at least around here. If you want a badass block, uh, how did that happen, man? John Brotherton. Yeah, man. Uh, I when I was when I started woodworking, I you know we tried the little Etsy style stuff that I learned later. People just made out of scrap wood. You know, I was trying to make solely that, and 
the margins just weren't there to be profitable. So I, at one point I took a picture of a couple strips of wood. I, I decided to finally make a cutting board because everyone's saying the other woodworkers like you should make some cutting boards, you know, start getting some sales going. So I'm like, okay, cuts a couple strips, just some paduk, which is red and some maple and walnut. I didn't even glue it up. I took a picture, posted it on Instagram. I had eight orders in the next 24 hours for cutting boards. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is wanted. But just like with any other, you know, art like this is it's the market's going to be saturated. So I'm like, okay, well, I don't just want to make, I don't want to compete with other people to cut my prices by using lower quality wood. Cause there's different levels of uh, grades of wood. I don't want to use less quality wood. I want to make something that's going to last forever. Cause you do it right. These things will last forever. You just got to take care of it. And uh, so I called up uh, well, Facebook message, John Brotherton, because my CPA knew him. Um, Elizabeth Montoya from Montoya Monsingo, um, great CPA. She's a great person, always trying to help out. And, uh, I was like, Hey, do you know any barbecue guys? You know, it's Texas, you know, <laughs> and she's like, you should send a message to John, John Brotherton. So shot him a message, responded immediately. You know, I had offered to make him a board for free. Just leave me an honest review, like it or not, you know, just let me know. And, uh, and he, he's like, screw you. I'm actually going to pay for this. You know, I'm like, no, it's free. He's like, no, I'm going to pay for it. And uh, so I ended up making it for him. You know, he loved it, plugged me into his network, and it's been going off ever since, man. And uh, so I try to make really high quality stuff. And beyond that, I try to really work with branding. So. For instance, right now I'm making a uh, a block for the Kiros, yeah. the Kiros tacos and barbecue. Um, so I'm gonna be. Usually, I will inlay the side of a board so that in the same font or very very close to the same font, at, so it shows their brand. You know, because it's all about rec instant recognition. You may see the same text, but if you don't have that visual draw of the same font, at least for me, I find that it kind of it muddies it a little bit. So uh, I had to get really good with the Photoshop and Adobe and all this stuff. But <laughs> I was trying to add a really personal touch. And that could be like maybe something from their heritage, uh, you know, using a wood like, you know, I had an Italian gentleman. I'm like, well, I can try to find some olive wood and we can use that in the inlay just out of a, you know, something like that. Or uh, using the colors, uh, North Texas smoke, I incorporated black, red and white because there are colors of all of <laughs> All the colors of the rainbow of wood, uh, except for blue. Technically, there is blue, but it's a very small portion of the tree. Blue Maho is in Hawaii, and it's amazing when you actually get it, but the chunks are like this small that are blue. The rest is gray. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you got purples, yellows, you know, kind of a brighter green. It, it's, it's really cool. So I was trying to find a wood that will either match like something that, that's near and dear to them or at least mirrors their brand. So North Texas Smoke, I, I use those colors and use their same font for their inlay. So, yeah. Dude, that's what actually sets you, you know, apart from everybody else that's doing this because you actually are investing your time in them, understanding who your client is and what's special to them and, and incorporating that into the uh, block that you build them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, man, I'm telling you, that's that's probably, you know, that's, that's the success right there. I lose a lot of business because that means higher prices, but... You know, if the people that are really passionate about what they do, they really want to reflect their image or, you know, some people may wait over a year or two to save up and get the block because it's kind of like an, I see this as heirloom piece. I see this as something that's going to yeah, outlive yeah. me. And that's like kind of how I live on, if you will. Not trying yeah, to get yeah. all Celine Dion on, on yeah, you. But. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I, I tell you, Caleb, I don't, I don't think you're losing business. Uh, they're just not the clients for you, man. They ain't ready yet. So exactly. there's, there's levels to this, bro. And, and they're just not there yet. No, don't, don't, right, don't Diana dip down. Man. <laughs> the other thing I, do, I really, I really started doing uh, soon after I made yours is I started inlaying rather than laser engraving because with laser engraving, you're destroying the fibers of the wood and the black char that stands out can eventually chip off. So mm -hmm. what I do is I actually just, you know, cut out a male, the, I'm sorry, the female section, then I cut out the mail, and then I just plug it in, glue it in, 
and uh, you know, just using a contrasting wood. So it's pretty fun. I mean, it's a. Uh, I'll wake up in the middle of the night like I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> it, like I and said, that's the ADHD. genius right there. Yeah, <laughs> these, these are some very, very beautiful boards. Uh, your patterns. Thank you. Like, how do you come up with the patterns? Are they always specific to who you're creating the board for, or is it just one of those things that just kind of happens during the process? So, not to get all profound, but I find <laughs> I try to find the peace in the chaos. Is kind of something that kind of helped me through, you know, some mental stuff I was going through and all that. It's just trying to find kind of the pattern in it. There's always a pattern somewhere to me. So it's like, what I do is just try to make a pattern that's kind of hard to see. Like a lot of people, they'll do mirror, they'll mirror the, the wood. So the, cause you know, every grain is uh, it, mostly arches, right? Cause you yeah, grow things yeah. on the tree. So some of them kind of mirror them. So make kind of like an oval or sometimes a circle. Uh, after a while, I started realizing that it looks like a Georgia O'Keeffe uh, painting. I'm not sure if you <laughs> know of that painter, but female anatomy is what she basically drew. So uh, I was like, maybe I'll get away with that. And I thought it would be more fun uh, to basically when an end grain board is what most of my people want, right? So that means that if end grain, if you're looking at a tree stump where the cir- we see all the circles of the grain, that's right. end grain. You know, side grain is if you're looking at the tree and it's growing to the side, right? So end grain boards, you get a lot more style, right? So the I like to basically make the, the circle going up, like a smiley face and then a frowny face. Uh, I started out as me thinking it was uh, since trees will always move, you always plan ahead, right? right? So same thing with wood. So I thought it'd be more structurally sound if you had counter pressure. That was something I taught. Turns out that's that's not a not a real thing. It's kind of like an old wives' tale. <laughs> but you get some really cool, hard, kind of hard to see patterns. Kind of like you know, painting you look at and you're like uh, you look a little bit deeper. You're not right, yeah. So yeah, man, I'm getting all weird on you. Anyway, so I try to do the <laughs> smiley and frowny, smiley and frowny, and then I just alternate. And you know, when I put the strips together, I just alternate them. So it's kind of like a there's a pattern there, but it's not so easy to see. Got it. Gotcha. Yeah. Um. When you're dealing with clients, mm-hmm. um, have you found something that, how can I phrase this? Have you found something that you wouldn't do because it just didn't make sense? Many times. And, and you're like, I'm not putting my name on that. Absolutely. What, uh, what would, what would be like your, uh, what's your red line? We're like, okay, that's so, where I'm not going. <laughs> A yellow light, you know, something that's kind of a warning bell, uh, would be someone trying saying anything like, "What's the cheapest you can do?" Or uh, how can you make the, you know, like their first thing is just wanting to, you know. And I respect that not everyone has the budget, but some people get pretty insistent, like leveraging anything from veteran status to whatever, and it's like, I have a business here, and the, the margins on these boards because I do a lot to them. They're they're fairly small, so I make up for that by making other items, usually out of the scrap wood, like pens and handles and stuff. And uh, you know, so that that's I usually be up front with them, like, look, if budget's a real issue, we need to think about a smaller board, maybe an edge grain board. Go with an edge grain board later, uh, something like that. But uh, the real. Uh, the real one is when they're like, well, what if I bring you wood or I will never, never run a board of wood through my, my machines that I don't know where it right. came from. <laughs> like, you know, it, like these lumber mills I go to, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, I, I know where they got the wood. Right. Or if it's even like a store like Rockler or Woodcraft, you know, they have higher priced wood cause it's, it's, you know, they gone changed a couple hands. So they always have to mark up, but you know, I, I'm always really uh, careful because you know, I have a saw stop table saw, which is awesome, but it has a safety feature <clears throat> where if it basically if you complete an electrical circuit, like if you touch it with your hand, it will shoot an aluminum cartridge into the blade as it's spinning and it will recede down like in a blink of an eye. It sounds like a small gunshot. I've seen that. Uh, I've seen it. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> uh, 
it, you know, it, but aluminum or anything like that, uh, any small amount of metal will complete that circuit and uh, and ruin the blade in a cartridge. Just about a hundred plus dollar fix. You just pop a new cartridge in there. It's not that big a deal, but it stacks up. So you know, I'm not going to put something in there that I know might have any shady stuff on there. You know, yeah. or you know, for instance, some people don't dry their wood enough. Um, you know, you got to make sure it's dried correctly. Like you, if they dry it too fast, it'll kind of it'll, we call it honeycombing. Kind of looks like a honeycomb when you look at the end grain, uh, and you may not see that until you start cutting into it. And then you know, it's, I spent a bunch of money on firewood. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, um, yeah. And if it's too high of moisture, then it'll trip my saw or it'll ruin the board because it needs to be within. Uh, nine to i want to say 15 percent moisture rating otherwise it's it's gonna be it's gonna move a lot more and you know i could be problems with the customer and since i guarantee my work against manufacturing issues and that being a manufacturing issue because i should have checked better you know some of these boards like this one uh this one up here whoop, wrong finger this one up here is uh that's close to three thousand dollars and i Ooh, can't buddy. afford to make a new $3,000 block. So no. I'm pretty careful about, uh, about all that, man. i tell you what, you, uh, you know, your stuff pretty deep, right? Yeah. <laughs> Obsessive tendencies. <laughs> you taking us to school. I'm just sitting in all like, wow. Yeah. Man. I can like stuff I never even thought about. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Caleb, uh, we're going to take a quick break and uh, pay a couple bills here. And we're going to be right back uh, with uh, White Oak Woodworking. All right. We like you to meet Sweet Charlene, the barbecue seasoning created from family bonds that is low in sodium but high in flavor. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner or a seasoned pit master. Level up your barbecue game with this dry rub that has amazing taste and great color. Go to eddywrightbarbecue.com right now and order your choice between the 6-ounce shaker bottle, the 16-ounce bag, or my favorite, the 32-ounce bag, and start rubbing your beef, pork, and poultry the right way. All right, guys, welcome back to the Black Smoke Barbecue Podcast, where we have our special guest today, Caleb White of White Oaks uh, Woodworking. And uh, man, Caleb, you, we talked about how you make these fantastic blocks and uh, you kind of touched on it a little bit. And I wanted to ask you, like, what are some other items, you know, that you are out there uh, manufacturing that people, if they don't quite have the budget to get into these uh, blocks, maybe they will like some of your other items. So what else do you do? Um, so wall art is what I'm trying to get into next inlaid wall art. So like I mentioned before, I'll inlay the name rather than engraving it. <clears throat> uh, so I'm working on some panels. That's not really going to be the cheaper option though. Those that's still going to be, that's very time intensive. Um, so, but a cheaper item, uh, some more affordable will be a charcuterie board, charcuterie mm. board, sh- you know, whatever you call mm-hmm. it. Charcuterie. <laughs> um, so that's definitely a much more affordable option edge grain boards are you know i'm still more expensive than the competition but they're definitely nowhere near as much as an end grain block um and for sure the most affordable would be pens i use a lot of strips to make little one inch by one inch by six inch you know little cubes and i just throw them on my lathe and i can I always try to make a little custom touch. So if people got big hands, little meat fingers, you know, I can, you know, I can make it a little bit more chunky or if they uh, have a little bit more less chunky hands, they can, uh, you know, I can make it a little bit more thin. Um, I, I don't engrave, I don't inlay because these are supposed to be, you know, more affordable items. And, uh, right. frankly, I find that when, you know, something's laser engraved or engraved with a, like a company name, I feel like it cheapens it to a certain extent. Like that's something you expect to buy for a you know better value bulk, right? I I market to real estate agents and to home builders, like custom home builders. Yeah. Uh, you know, hey, you know, you can give them this this pen, you know, as to sign their their closing documents. You know, and it's something they'll keep with them. They'll know where they got it. So if someone asks, hey, where'd you get that really cool uh, pen? And they're like, oh, this this home builder. 
you know, so it, it doesn't really need to have a name on it. Cause I try to make it unique enough that it's going to stand out. Uh, and the cool thing is with pens is I can batch out like on a really slow day, eight pens. I can sell for 30 bucks made out of scrap and the hardware costs maybe three to five dollars. So it's really good margins. Um, maybe takes a half hour to an hour uh, for the simple ones. But the people that are really big on like pens and pen collecting that want like a fountain pen, I went and researched where I can find like um, not just the hardware that's easy to find, but like hardware that's reliable. And then uh, where I can find like the gold nibs that are really sought after by collectors. And then the, uh, the better um, I'm blanking on the, what they call it, not the reservoir. It's like a, vulcanized rubber section whoever if they're independent they'll know what i'm talking about mm -hmm. uh the feed the feed yes uh so oh. i buy those separately and i can you know put them in the pen replacing the pretty much garbage ones uh that come with it so you know you get the nice hardware and then they make it affordable those hardware people make it affordable by using cheaper nibs and reservoirs i'm uh, not reservoirs uh the feeds i go out and find those <laughs> and then i just put them in so Nice. Still got to add a personal touch, even on the, just, you know, people that want to spend money on something, they, uh, you know, I try to make it more, mean more to them, I guess. Yeah. 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 These pins are beautiful too. I was looking at those as well. I, I love your craftsmanship <laughs> with, with your products. It's, Thank you. I can tell even just by talking to you that you, you put your heart into what you do. And I really appreciate Absolutely. that. It's not like you're just trying to make a quick buck or, you know, it's like you really serious about the type of wood you use, the type of material you use, what you're putting out there. And that's something we really don't see too much of these days when people are putting out products, especially after the pandemic. And that's something I, uh, I love about the barbecue community is I see that in y'all. Like everyone's very, you know, they're all about, their their food's their reflection of them. And the same thing with my products. It's like, it's, it's a really, uh, it can be an emotional thing. You know, like I, I put a lot into this, you know, for them, you know, made it personally for them, not just the item, but I try to personalize it for them. You know, like these, you know, one of the first big blocks I made was for a family that likes to entertain often. And so I put their family name on the side and they must post every single week when they, you know, have people over when they, you know, barbecue. And, uh, you know, they just, they still tell me like every other week, like, <laughs> love your board it means a lot to me like it really really does yeah so. i was gonna ask you about that Kayla. so i know that you kind of like jumped into the barbecue world in the uh in the quest for business but once you got in there uh, what was it like to see what the community is all about and to be embraced by it uh I, i'm honored to be honest i mean there's i haven't met someone uh Okay, I have met a couple people that I didn't really like, but for the most part, <laughs> it's because they didn't, you know, kind of adhere to the, the community of it. You know, they're more about for themselves. And I see, like, how passionate y'all are. And, uh, you know, it, it you know, identify with that, and it makes sense to me. And uh, Yeah. It's, so uh, it, it's the, uh, the work ethic behind it. You know, everyone trying to – I mean, y'all making brisket, but, you know, and then ribs or whatever, but everyone has their own little – spin on it and yeah this is coming from a guy that used to think rudy's uh, no offense but to them i mean they make <laughs> they make food and it's edible um i mean for a gas station it's not bad bro for a gas station for, uh, again no shade yeah. on rudy's you know no shade for, on rudy's but it's not gas station, on the level ain't. no that no. y'all are doing and and Brotherton's is doing and it, it just the, the creativity that come up with. I mean, Kristen Rossler from Rossler's Blue Core Barbecue, she has oh, eaten yeah. kale. I know I told you I grew up a vegetarian, <laughs> but I departed from that very quick. And even then I couldn't, I could not stand kale. She got me eating it every time I go up to the window. I'm, I'm ordering the kale salad. It's amazing. Yeah. Like just what, I mean, uh, Nomada, uh, from in Mexico, uh, Farid, uh, don't, Asked me to pronounce his last name because I'll mess it up. <laughs> uh, and uh, Chewy, uh, they they made asparagus with I can't even tell you what was on. It's like breaded, and they had these sauces they just made, and it was 
it was amazing. Like what these guys come up with. I mean, I, it, it blows my mind sometimes. <laughs> you know, you, you mentioned earlier uh, about a, a board for brother Trey over for uh, the Carols. And uh, man, if, if you guys don't know, you know, y'all that are listening. If you don't know about uh, Trey Sanchez, man, that dude is completely awesome. Um, you know, legit as it come. Oh, I mean, dude is just, he's a whiz at what he does. And uh, birria tacos, man, uh, I don't think I've had a better one, you know, than, than what he makes, you know. And you can find him on uh, Man Fire Food. You know, he was on Man Fire Food and, and uh, you know, did a, a, a good demonstration of what he does. Well, long story short, uh, our brother Trey now is uh, moving into brick and mortar. And so I'm pretty sure your uh, board is going to be made for this brick and mortar. So, man, what's that going to be like going to be able to to uh, deliver that to Trey? Uh, amazing and monumental in its own way because uh, it's his first brick and mortar. And it's my first time actually making something out of White Oak, even though my company <laughs> name is White Oak. <laughs> Uh, white oak woodworking is just because, you know, my last name's white. So, okay. I try to incorporate trees somehow. Anyway. So, uh, when you, I've been trying to like, you know, Hey, you know, one light colored wood, you know, maybe white oak and some, you know, it, it's a love or hate kind of thing. Cause there's a lot of artifacts and a lot of different, um, uh, it's different than most woods that you see. I can show you a piece if you want, but, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty unique. So when he was talking about, it, I showed him a picture and he's like, on board like, yes finally <laughs> uh, so, uh one thing i didn't expect is i need to start wearing a back brace because white oak is extremely dense yeah so dense even like the more heavy woods that i've used before never have been this heavy so i'm not looking forward to delivery day i'll probably get a friend to go with me or something because he's got a 26 by 40 inch and i usually Ooh. you know i always make him a little bit more beefy so i can trim down if i need to uh, so if it's, if it works out, you know, they usually get maybe another inch or two, uh, in the window aside, uh, for, for their board. So it's going to be a big, big guy, but it's also got a Peruvian walnut border, uh, Peruvian walnut oh, wow. when it's, uh, when it's, uh, sealed is almost jet black. It's beautiful. You can still see, you can still see some of the grain. It's kind of got like a deep reds, a little bit of white flake of every once in a while. It's it's amazing. Um, I can't wait really. to see that, man. Oh, I'm excited. I'm really that excited. Like gonna be <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh, have you been getting? Uh, I know that you do a lot of stuff for barbecue folks, uh, but from the commercial side, like what you're doing with Vicaros, is that something you're aiming towards, or or you prefer to keep it more along the lines of just your uh, your smaller smaller stuff? <laughs> So the reason I like working for uh, with smaller uh, businesses is that it's more personal uh, and they're more understanding about how much it costs and how much goes into it. I find that when people are trying to buy bulk of stuff, I mean, I'm not a big fan of uh, Boost because I, I don't know if I'm getting in trouble saying this, but I find that there's a lot of defects in there like all the time. I'm always seeing failed glue lines. I'm like, okay, well, that's going to last about six months, you know, something like that. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's when they usually will want to really get me down on a price. And, you know, it, it's it's so much less personal and it's, it's bland. I find it bland. You know, it's just like a no real style to it, just a bunch of maple on a block and go. It's like, it's just really not my style. And frankly, I haven't been, you know, I have been approached a couple of times and it's never been in their budget. So that works out for me. Uh, but I do, uh, I, I have a friend uh, also of my CPA, uh, Elizabeth Montoya, uh, that is a custom home. She works with custom home builders as a designer. And uh, I, you know, she plugged me into that network as well. But unfortunately, I just, they don't have the 90 days I need at minimum just to get to their order, usually, because they're usually in a rush. Uh, so I haven't been able to do too much with them, but my buddies love it because I find a good woodworker that I know and send them their way. 
So uh, <laughs> they get all the business from that. But I really do want to get more into that. Like uh, this lady approached me about a, a 96 inch long uh, L shaped uh, bench for their entertainment area. So it's 96 inches long. And then the, L, the short end of the L is like 60 inches. So it'd been really nice build. They, they wanted like, you know, it painted black. I'm like, so I don't paint. I don't stain. It's part of my, my thing. I use only hardwoods, uh, you know, call me bougie, but I, that's how I distinguish myself. You know, I let the color of the wood, the natural figure of the wood do the talking. Um, and you could just, at least I could just stare at it all day. <laughs> I don't know about anyone else, but, uh, you know, just painting over that grain is like, what would be the equivalent of Sacrilegious. that? Sacrilegious. Yeah. Like putting absolutely. ketchup on a steak. There you go. <laughs> that, it, yeah. It's just absolute. The worst thing you'd imagine someone doing to your food is, is what paint or stain is for me with, with hardwoods. Man. So. Man. I'm mad at you about that. For real. <laughs> no. No. My man is passionate about what he does, man. And I mean, I, I've been fortunate enough to. Uh, afford one of these blocks and i gotta tell you man it's it's absolutely beautiful you know and uh for those of you out there watching if uh, you've been on my videos on my uh, youtube channel uh that is the block that i use uh pretty much in uh, presentations at the end of the the videos and and i absolutely love it but let's pivot a little bit you know we we've been talking about you manufacturing you know these boards and and all the different items or whatever now we're going to talk about somebody that's hard headed. Me, I'm talking about <laughs> uh, not taking care of the board the way you should. You mentioned earlier, if you take care of these boards, they'll last you forever. You know, and, and my board is is uh, it's in pretty good shape. Uh, well, you know, what? let me back up because I'm not you. I know you're probably looking at me like, man, what the hell did you do this board? <laughs> but They're made to be used, man. So that, you'd be surprised. Oh man, like, it's I, you got to try to throw to the dishwasher that will actually get my uh, get me a little bit on the angry side. <laughs> like, what'd you do to my baby? I won't do that. I won't do that. I promise you that. But I, I have had some, uh, you know, some some. Uh, I'm not going to say cheaper, but uh, less expensive boards. Uh, that um, literally is ashy, you know, because it's just, it just, I haven't done anything with them as far as oiling them or putting mm, the okay. board butter and that type of thing on it. Uh, and it's boards that I, I pulled one out yesterday. It's a little miniature block that I, I was, I was uh, taking pictures of a sandwich I made, BLT. And I pulled this mm. board out and I was like, good yeah. Lord, when's the last time I even used this board? <laughs> you know, and it was just so dry. So for those of us out here, man, that need a little education on how to maintain our, uh, our blocks, man, what do you recommend? How do we do it? What do we use? How frequently? That type of thing. So wood reacts to moisture. And uh, like I said, wood always moves. You just have to plan ahead. I do. I take care of most of that. The rest is on the customer. Just make sure that it's saturated with uh, mineral oil. Uh for those that aren't familiar with mineral oil, make sure you're using a white FDA approved mineral oil. Um, you can get a, I used to get a bucket off of Amazon for like 16 bucks. It's just, it's not bad at all. Um, I just use that for saturation. And then I use, uh, I'll buff in uh, some a homemade mixture of beeswax, carnauba wax, which is a little bit more heat resistant. And, uh, and I just cut it with mineral oil and some vitamin E kind of help with the, I mean, it helps a little bit, I believe. This is kind of, I don't know if it's pseudoscience. I don't know if there's an actual study on it, but it's supposed to help with the color. Uh, oh, so okay. I just put it in. It's not like it's going to hurt him. So. Um, <clears throat> and then I use that to just make a mixture that I can put on it. It gives it, it, it makes a nice slide a lot more, a lot easier. Um, mm. You know, and, and grain boards especially will essentially self-heal. Uh, you'll see a little bit of a mark, but it's like cutting, uh, think of the wood fibers as a bunch of straws. All right. You know, if you're cutting the side of the straw, like an edge grain board, it's going to cut and it's, you're going to see there's a cut. If you turn those straws up and you draw the knife across the top of them, it's going to move around the grain fibers, essentially or around those fibers. And the, since there's so much pressure on the outside, it's going to essentially self repair. I mean, it's not going to be like, you'll never see it, but it's going to hold up really well uh, right. against those knife marks. And it's better on your knives, especially people that got like really expensive knives, like Dal Strong or whatever. Um, they're a little bit more particular about what they cut on. 
So that's where the end grain really comes in, where it really shines. So if you use your block, you just got to make sure you keep it moist. I hate that word. I don't know why I just said it. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, put a little bit of mineral oil on there. You want to make sure you get both sides. Uh, uneven drying is not good. So anytime you wash the face of the block, put a little water on the back of the block and then towel dry and uh, and let, you know, if, if you have one of my blocks that has feet on it, you can just set it on its feet just like normal. If you have a double-sided board where it doesn't have feet, you can set it on its side. I even make stands for that um, because it needs to dry evenly or it can cause movement. You know, depending mm. on the size of the board, it's probably negligible, but... You know, like I said, just the better you take care of it, the longer it's going to last. Uh, I've only had to resurface two of my blocks, and that's the service I do offer only for my boards. I don't do anyone else's. Uh, the first one was burnt bean because I cut 13,000 pounds of meat yeah. every month on that block. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they're the reason I started investing in hand planes. Oops, wrong finger. Hand planes. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I got a, you know, like a mid sized one. I'm supposed to be like the catch all for hand planes. I'm like, oh, I'll use this. And I started using I'm like, I should have gotten the bigger one. <laughs> it was a lot of work. I got there like 3 30 in the morning. Uh, so he, he would uh, be able to use it by uh, service time on, on Saturday. And I yeah, quicker just, turnaround. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, it's, you're really only taking like a millimeter off, maybe. Okay. Uh, that's okay. the other thing I had to do when I started woodworking and switch to metric because I love that system now. Imperial sucks. I'm sorry. I may be un American <laughs> now, but I love metric. Um, so uh, hey, you're only taking a thin layer off of the block. Even then, like they, their board was, it was used. You could see it. You know, it but uh, for the most part, like I haven't had a single other call from customer about needing to resurface. And if they do, usually it's just a card scraper, which is basically just. Well, it looks like about six inch uh, slice of metal, about maybe an eighth inch thick. I put a small burr on it with a, a rod, burnishing rod, and I just kind of bow it slightly and just just slides off shavings. And usually that's uh -huh. enough, so you, you may not even see the marks again. I usually like to leave them because I feel like it tells a story. I'm trying to get all you. Know, weird on you. Yeah, but, oh, yeah. Uh, I like it, you know. You know it, so it's just, but it gets rid of the extra stuff that looks. Um, any fibers that are kind of standing up because they're they're damaged or torn, it basically takes those off, and that gets rid of like kind of the the white uh, residue. Uh, it looks like residue, but basically it's just those fibers that are sticking out apart from the others that are drying faster. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. Well, man, I, I got to tell you that you know uh, my wife, man, she had your back, dude. You know, like you were saying, you know, oh my baby, you know, talking about the board and. Uh, 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 <laughs> A while back, I did, <laughs> I did a a little video, did a reel, uh, for the cooking guild, you know, uh, for some knives, and and I had this idea. Oh man, this would look cool if I like held the knife up and then dropped it and walked away, and, and it and it stuck in the board, and so uh, I did that, and I went and dropped the knife, and it stuck in the board, and I walked away. And I had the camera there, and and so here's this knife, the tip stuck in the board, and the knife was kind of doing that little wiggle when I walked Wait, away, and I, and I thought it was perfect. I thought it was perfect, you know. And she was like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> so I don't saw how wide my I eyes got. I saw uh, <laughs> but and, yeah, all joking aside, that's not that big a deal. Um, it the the end grain especially, it'd be a much bigger deal if it was edge grain. Yeah, but end grain it'll, it'll essentially self repair. There'll be a small little divot, which is negligible. Um, but the cool thing is, since it's end grain, all I gotta do is I take a three inch drill bit and I cut dowels. I have a custom jig uh, to make uh, dowels uh, the exact size I want them. And so what I usually will do if like uh, I don't let any knots, any small gap at all. Like maybe there's a little little. Uh, little spot where I think that the glue didn't fully adhere or whatever. I'll just drill it out. I have a little uh, brace for my drill bit, uh, my hand drill basically to make sure it goes straight down and up. And I just drill it out. I make a custom dowel. I just glue it in. It's basically brand new end grain section for that board. So if uh, I'll do that for the blocks right out of my 
my shop, if I feel like there isn't a spot that isn't perfect, I usually go like an inch at least deep, depending on how big the board is. And uh, I mean, you'll most people don't know, don't even notice it. I have to point it yeah. out to them. That and usually I'll call my my customer up like, "Hey, if you want, I can get a little crazy with it. <laughs> Put a different color, uh, different color wood in." And uh, Brandon Lamb uh, went all, was all over that. He wanted me only use uh, scrap strips like little extra strips from other blocks he only wanted those and he wanted me to use whatever color i wanted so his block is definitely <laughs> unique let's just put it that oh, way oh yeah um he's a unique kind of guy though he is he's awesome yeah yeah uh, i'm not just saying that because he's my boss <laughs> <laughs> uh well, so uh yeah like that knife mark for instance i could always just drill that out and just glue another stick in so you know, I I don't even think I mean you because that's what you do. You will probably like, bing, I see it right there. But everybody oh, else, man, uh, people won't even see it, man. It, it, that's yeah, that's that's the funny thing. I only had one customer notice before I mentioned it. It was because it was like slightly impact. They had a pattern board. It was a uh, Bubba's Blue Plate Barbecue. They do a lot of competitions. Were great people. Great people. Um, I actually sponsored them. I made a couple other boards, but. Uh, they noticed right away. I'm like, uh, are you okay with that? <laughs> but, oh, no, it looks great. I thought you did it on purpose. Like, nope. <laughs> that, was, that was a knot I didn't see. Because, you know, a lot of times with these knots, like, obviously, I'll, when I pick out each board, I'm looking to find something that has the least amount of knots. You know, if they had knots, I make sure it's, you know, usually my, my strips are 32 inches long when I make these, these boards. I did, for a big block, I'll do basically two 32-inch long and edge grade boards and then cross cut them and flipping them up. Um, so I'm looking to make sure those knots are spaced correctly. And, uh, you know, but sometimes like I'll have a board that looks clean and then I cut into it and, you know, maybe there's honeycombing like I talked about before, yeah. the proper drying and that usually I'll just throw that board out. But sometimes there's knots in there too, like little small splits or checks or, you know, maybe a small knot. It's like, you know, well, I have standards. It's stupid because I know no one will even notice. But you know, that's you know, I guess try to, gotta check myself, make sure I hold to my standards. Because that's the thing is like I want to make sure I'm keeping to my brand. You know, just like y'all are keeping the quality of, of food you're putting out. So absolutely, yeah. I'm not gonna have somebody bring me brisket and say, "Hey, can you cook this for me?" <laughs> no, that's okay. I, I, no. I'll supply the brisket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like you know, it's, it's really cool wood. I think it's like a uh, acacia, uh, uh, like you mean acacia wood. I'm like yeah, 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 yeah that's like, it. Uh, it came from that. Africa. <laughs> Africa has some of the best woods. Though. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That one of them that's my favorite, but I really don't use for blocks is uh, Wenge. Uh, w e n g e. It looks really cool. Uh, I've done some really fun stuff with that for like uh, smaller pieces, but uh, it's also brittle and kind of a bear to work with because uh, it's brittle. It'll chip out. Mm. Ugh, I can't tell you how much repair work I had to do on one block, but it was a it was, it's kind of a pain to work. But man, when it comes out, it's gorgeous. Uh, Paduke, most of the col- the really uh, vibrant colors uh, woods I get are from from Africa. Uh, I want to say. Uh, Yellow Heart is from Africa. I believe there's some in Southern Amer- South America too. Uh, you know, so. there's there's a, a wood I can't remember the proper name of it. It's often referred to as black wood. That's from Africa. Mm-hmm. African blackwood. Is that what it's called? I believe so. Yeah, I'm sure there's a more. Oh, there's always multiple names <laughs> and subspecies. Okay. So that was always uh, beautiful wood to me. And it seemed mm-hmm. like it just had a natural. Uh, natural sheen to it in in every mm-hmm. uh every application i've seen uh is something like that or say a, a better question is what are the woods that are just absolutely um uh, just not fit for a block any softwood uh pine uh, so there's a debate about pine uh, being good for a block. Uh, I personally don't touch it. I only use hardwoods. I even put that on my business cards. Like, I don't paint or stain. I only use hardwoods just because it makes it simple for me. I'm, I'm not the smartest 
you know, tool in the shed. So Brad's tool in the shed. So I, I keep to what I know. And frankly, it's not as fun because I love hardwoods that, and I know they're going to hold up. They're proven. So I'm just going to stick with what I know. Uh, softwoods, uh, they can hold up, but there's also a lot of problems that come with it. So it's just not, not a big deal. So pine or anything like that. Douglas fir, I'd consider it's more of the hardest softwood that there is. And it's beautiful. It's kind of got a nice deep reddish uh, color to it. It's pretty nice. Um, other than that, um, there's really no wood I won't touch. Um, but if you can tell by this, my forehead, there's some I wish I hadn't. I'm allergic to a lot of woods, actually. But <laughs> really, oh, wow. that's yeah. interesting. Wow. I would have never thought yeah, right I get all, that. I get all, <laughs> it gets all swampy like it is right now, and my face is all sweaty after like maybe 20 minutes out there. And I work out of my garage, so I don't I don't have AC, and uh, so I'm out there, and I maybe I got a couple 24 inch fans I got on me, but you know I'm all sweaty, and then I'm on my table saw, which is the worst for dust. It just kicks it right up into my wow. face, and uh, so I come out look like I got, you know trying to do uh, man <laughs> glitter, you know fashion show or something. <laughs> find you at one of those clubs huh? <laughs> you like my glow up <laughs> oh man i had a question um yeah i watch a lot of hgtv and i've noticed that there's been an uptake of butcher block countertops has anybody mm-hmm. approached you for those and would you do one of those so butcher block countertops yes i've been approached many times about them uh, usually what that involves is uh, when when I hear butcher block countertop, 90% of the time what they're thinking of is basically staggered pieces of scrap wood that like don't really line up, and it's edge grain. Gluing, so it means that you'd basically be gluing end grain to end grain, which is another one of those old wives' tales that you shouldn't do. I just try to steer away from it because I don't feel like it's the best, especially with the structural portion of the, the edge grain board as it is, it's going to, it can cause problems later on. I've seen it. So I just steer away from it. Uh, I do, uh, you can do an end grain one. I'll do that all day, but there's a lot of complications that come with that too. And once again, I guarantee all my work. So yeah, I got to think of long and hard before I start doing a project like that. You know, it's like, okay, well one space, I work out of a two car garage and I have a lot of machinery in there. Uh, so, uh, you know, I have, bruises all the time because i'm always running it. my my bandsaw uh there's a guide rod for the for the fence it's my nemesis i run into it every single day and you'd think i'd learn by now but <laughs> i don't it gets and you every so, time huh? it kiss me every time i was like Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> i'm never gonna do that again and then i do like five minutes yeah, later right. so build a board they said <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I have to imagine too uh, with the whole uh, the butcher block countertops. I just think that's something, man. Over time, with with your countertops being such an essential part to mm-hmm. not only the function of your kitchen but the look of your kitchen, mm-hmm. I, I think that that could almost be a fool's endeavor if you're not really going to be, you know, hyper vigilant about taking care of that thing. I I don't think that's a good idea, man. So, yeah, and this is where I, what I sh- I should have mentioned is like the the reason it's so like you know bigger companies can sell them like they do is because they do kind of like the staggered end grain to end grain glue up. You know, it's kind of like you know have that kind of static pattern where you see like okay, a six inch piece of wood, then like a twelve inch piece of wood. Uh, yeah, it's hard to describe, but it's very cheap to put together like that. And you use cutoffs from other projects. But me, it's like, okay, well, I'm going to make it, you know, they want a 96 inch, you know, by whatever countertop, I'm going to get 96 inch strips of wood as clear as I can from knots and other stuff, or I'll find ways to repair it. And then I do it as one piece. That way I don't need to worry about those, those end splitting or whatever. And of course that increases the price dramatically. Um, But that also causes a problem once again with space, you know, like, okay, well, you know, there's going to be a bigger time investment. I basically have to shut down my shop. Um, I actually had a similar thing. I had a, someone that wanted a four by eight, four foot by eight foot secretary desk. 
uh, like full apron around it, proving walnut trim, and, you know, that's going to be amazing. Uh, I quoted them four months and they were very angry in two months that I wasn't done and I backed out. So I had a lot of subpoena left over wow. African mahogany. So it's oh, just, wow. you know, but wow. it was, it was going to take a lot of, I basically would have to shut down everything else I've, I've been doing and focus. I'd have to rearrange everything to accommodate the workflow for that. Uh, so I, one of the benefits of doing the whole, uh, lean six Sigma. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that. Yep. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Worst thing is like they have belts. I I feel so dumb. I'm like I'm a black belt and lean six sigma. People think I'm like a martial artist. Right. I'm like, no, no. I don't even mention it anymore. He's like, you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that 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 course that I took like, really helped me out because like it it really got me thinking into like how much am I really spending on this? You know, uh, basically like the fir- after the first year um, was when about the time that I started taking that course uh, from Villanova University and. Uh, almost immediately realized I'm paying to make people cutting boards. <laughs> you know, this is before I met, like when I was trying to do the ones for like home, you know, before I met John and everything like that, like I lost money on pretty much everything I made so far. No wonder I'm <laughs> short on cash. <laughs> so, you know, trying to, you know, get everything set up. So everything flows and just makes the process more fun too. So. Yeah. Um, no, I know that it's tough with, how passionate you are about what, what you're doing and especially being such a stickler for detail. But, uh, are you giving any thoughts to expansion? Good question. Um, I had, um, but with my current job, you know, I'm back to where I am doing it for more fun than I am for, well, obviously I'm not going to pay to make people stuff, but you know, it's back to where I can really put more passion into it and more thought into it because I'm not, you know, burning the, the candle at both ends. So um, expansion, I'd love to have kind of a program, especially for other veterans uh, to learn woodworking, you know, maybe have kind of like a, uh, <clears throat> I can't remember what they're called, but basically it's like a, a shop that mul- a, a bunch of people can use. Kind of like one of those auto places where you can work on your own car, yep. but with woodworking. That way people that are starting out that don't have, uh, access to kind of machinery I do. Cause that's the one thing I learned very quickly is I can't afford cheap tools. Like I can't afford to keep going back and returning you know, if it's been the mm-hmm. return window or buying new stuff because uh, especially like the stuff from the bi- big box stores, which is where I usually bought like Home Depot, the table saw, you know, or, or, you know, Sanders I bought would last maybe a couple weeks or a month. And uh, luckily, I was able to return them because I was in COVID area where the return windows were like 120 days or something. But I burned through a lot of machines before I realized, like, I might as well make this simple and cry a little bit when I swipe the credit card yeah. and actually get something I can use yeah. for a long term. So, uh, But being able to provide that to other smaller wood shops uh, would be really awesome. Uh, I kind of have this idea rolling around in my head where they make some stuff under the White Oaks brand but they're also able to use it to make stuff on their own for their own brand. So no solid plans It's still rolling around my noggin. Um, trying to get everything set up with a new job and everything first before I start, you know, I got to pay off some, some machines. I have a lot of <laughs> bills on those machines. So uh, let's just say uh, I should have taken out a small business loan when I started, but we were supposed to be a small thing, right? Yeah. I had all these orders coming in. I'm like, I need this today, you know, because I told them like a couple of weeks. I'm realizing now that's not going to be done in a couple of weeks, I, especially with what I have right now. So I'm like, I have a credit card. There you go. <laughs> uh, lots of debt. <laughs> lots of debt. <laughs> hey, man, you can't stop good things, brother. When, when something stop. is good, it is going to grow. That is for yeah. sure, man. But uh, I tell you what, man, we've been going for a little over an hour, man. Uh doesn't seem like it, but... uh this has been a great conversation, so we're going to get ready to wrap it up. And, man, we'd love to have you back again sometime, Caleb. And uh, Anytime, tell- man. Give me an excuse to talk. <laughs> hey, brother, we'll do it. We'll do it. Tell the folks where they can find you, man. So uh, my main uh, social media platform is Instagram. It's uh, at white underscore oaks underscore woodworking. Uh, I did have another one on there that may show up where it's just white oaks woodworking, all one word. Don't follow that one. 
I got locked out of it and Instagram doesn't like helping you. So, uh, and then uh, social, uh, fat, oh, I'm sorry. Facebook is White Oaks Woodworking. And uh, I also have a website, also whiteoakswoodworking.com. Good stuff, man. Reach Good out stuff. anytime with inquiries. That'll work. T, brother, tell us where they can find you, man. Catch me at uh, tdub.bbq on Instagram, Facebook, Threads. I remember that time. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't forget the threads, brother. <laughs> Al, tell them where they can find you, man. Yes, sir. Hey, before I do that, I do want to say, uh, Caleb, thank you, man, for uh, you know coming to chop it up with us today, and also thank you for your service. You mentioned you're a veteran, so yes. I don't want to slip, you know, let that slip by. So I want to say, hey, thank you for your service for what you did, thank man. You. Really appreciate thank you for that. Thank you for your support. Absolutely. Uh, so again, you can find me on all the social uh, media platforms. Except for uh, X, I'm not on X, but uh, the Dog Father's Barbecue, D A W G F A T H A S B B Q. Come holler at me. Can I plug one more thing? Absolutely, go for it. Uh, so, <clears throat> the Semper Fine America's Fund is for veterans that are transitioning out of service, and they're actually they've been well, they've been a huge asset for me. Uh, they have a program called the Apprenticeship Fund. So uh, if someone is getting out of the military and they want to start or they have started a hobby or small business and, uh, you know, something like that, if just reach out to the Semper Fi and America's Fund, um, even though it has the word Semper Fi, it's not Marine only. It's for all branches of service. And uh, they uh, greatly helped me uh, getting set up with my shop. They set me up with news interviews, uh, you know, and all sorts of support, including like meeting with CPAs, you know, learning how to run the books and all that stuff. Uh, uh, Steven Rossler is part of the program. Oh, yeah. uh, Hollis, Texas barbecue food truck. Uh, I want to say near Dallas, he's a part of the program. So um, newer existing businesses, doesn't matter. Worth the phone call. Do you know the, stuff, do they have a website that you, you know of? Oh yeah. They have a big website. They're a huge nonprofit. Um, and like another one, uh, I can't mention, uh, they don't really spend a whole lot on advertising. Everything, almost everything goes towards veterans. And it's it's insane what they do for you. Uh, like I, They tell us not to like really tell anybody like how much because they don't want other people that may not be at the same level or they feel that aren't really putting in the same effort. They don't want them to feel like, you know, whatever. So, But yeah. they do a lot, a huge amount. And, Good deal. You know, I I wouldn't be where I'm at without them or John, John Brothers. Nice. So. Yeah. Good stuff. And we'll get that info from you, man. And we'll make sure we put it in the uh, oh, in the description you. for the uh, for the video and description for the audio podcast. So, uh, you folks, if you're listening now, check in those descriptions. We'll make sure we have that information up there for y'all. Awesome. And I am Brandon from BKC Cooks. You can find me all over the place except for X. Don't do that. But everywhere else, you can find me at BKC Cooks, and I will be there waiting on you. And y'all, that's going to wrap it up for this one. This is the Black Smoke Barbecue Podcast. We appreciate y'all watching and listening again. Thanks again to our guest, Caleb. We had a great time, and we're going to catch y'all on the next one. Later. Later.